In this video, we talk about continuous random variables. Remember that a random variable is a real-valued variable whose value is determined by an underlying random experiment. Equivalently, we defined a random variable x as a function from the sample space to the set of real numbers. In other words, it's a function that assigns real values to the outcomes in the sample space. We also define the range of a random variable x as a set of all possible values of x. And we said that if the range is a countable set, then we have a discrete random variable. And we have been discussing the discrete random variables for a while now. We talked about probability mass function. We talked about CDF, cumulative distribution function. We talked about expected value and variance. Now, in this video, we want to talk about situations in which the range is an un uncountable set. Specifically, we want to talk about continuous random variables. So in these situations, the range of the random variable x could be, let's say, the set of real numbers from 0 to 1, or it could be the set of real numbers uh, from minus 1 to 2, union real numbers from 3 to 4, or the range could be the entire real line, and so on. And all of these sets are uncountable, so we cannot use uh, our theory of discrete random variables here. And in this video, we want to focus on uh, continuous random variables. So let's start the discussion by an example. I choose a real number uniformly at random in the interval a to b. So this is a set of all real numbers such that x is between a and b. And call it x. So that's my random variable. So, and we choose that number uniformly. So what do you mean by that? It means that, like, you know, we have, you know, this interval here. I pick a point completely at random. What it means is that the probability that x belongs to a set, let's call it, let's say, x1 up to x2, right? The probability that my random variable belongs to the interval from x1 to x2, where you know x1 is larger than a, is less than x2 and less than b, is going to be the length of this interval. So if x2 minus x1 divided by the total length b minus a. So that's my random variable. Now, what's the range of this random variable? Of course, the range of this random variable is a set of all values between a and b. X could be any value from A to B, any real value. So the range is not countable. So we cannot, uh, you know, this is not a discrete random variable. In particular, we cannot define a probability mass function for it. Remember that the probability mass function was defined as probability that X is equal to X, right? For any value X, you know, lowercase x. But if I want to find probability that x equals x, what do I get? Here, if I choose x2 very, very close to x1, right? if I shrink this interval, this probability also shrinks. The probability that x belongs to this interval becomes smaller and smaller. In particular, if I want to know probability that you know x exactly equal to x1, which I can say that x1 equals x2, I get 0. So probability that the random variable x is exactly equal to, let's say, um, a value here, you know, 1.2, for example, if 1.2 is in this range, is going to be, ex that probability is going to be zero. So I cannot use probability mass function. However, I can find cumulative distribution function, CDF. Remember when, when we discussed CDF uh, for discrete random variables, we said that one of the advantages of the CDF is that it can, it can be defined for any random variable. So let's find the CDF. So by definition, the CDF, so let's find the CDF. By definition, CDF is the probability that x is less than or equal to x. OK? So first of all, we immediately know that if x is less than or equal to, or let's just say that x is less than a, then fx of x is going to be 0, right? Basically, 
if this is a to b and I choose x here, the probability that my random variable is less than or equal to this value is going to be 0. Similarly, if x is larger than b, then the CDF is going to be 1. If I choose a value here, the probability that my random variable is, le is less than this x here is going to be 1. So the interesting case is where this value x is between a and b. In that case, probability, or let's write it as CDF, fx of x, which is the probability that random variable x is less than or equal to x, is going to be what? Is the probability that my random variable x is in this region here, is from a to x. And we know what that is. It's the length of this segment here divided by the length of from this segment from A to B. So this is going to be X minus A divided by B minus A. Okay, so let's summarize. So we have this value, this value, this value. If I want to summarize them all in one formula, what do I get? Well, Fx of X is equal to 0 for x less than a is going to be x minus a divided by b minus a for x between a and b and it's going to be 1 for x larger than b so let's plot it less than a is going to be 0 it goes linearly x minus a divided by b minus a uh, until it reaches 1 note that if i put x here b then i get 1 so and then after that, it stays at 1. So that's the CDF of my random variable. So we notice that the shape of the CDF is very different from the CDFs of discrete random variables that we have seen so far. In particular, we remember that the CDFs of discrete random variables had a staircase shape. So the CDF was like this. If I had a discrete random variable, it was like 0, then it jumped. You know, jumps at some values, x1, then jump again, jump, and so on. So that was, a, you know, the shape, shape of the CDF for a discrete random variable. Discrete random variable. So it has jumps. Here, we don't have any jumps. It's a continuous function. So it's a completely different uh, CDF. And actually, if you think about it, that makes sense. Remember, the value of the jump, you know, in the discrete random variables, when we jumped, the value of the jump was the probability at that point. Probability that x equals x1, if this, you know, the jump at x1. Now, in, for, a di for a random variable like this, the value, the probability that x equals to any value is going to be 0. So we don't have any jump. The value of the jump is going to be 0. In other words, the CDF here is a continuous function. And that's why we said that this is a continuous random variable. So x here is a continuous random variable. So we define a random variable x as a continuous random variable if the CDF is a continuous function. So this is a this is the definition of continu continuous random variables. Now, if I have a continuous random variable, um, I can still find its CDF, but probability mass function is not well defined here because if I have a continuous random variable, the probability that x is equal to any value x is going to be zero. So what we're going to do in the next videos, we're going to define a new concept, uh, which we call it probability density function which is kind of similar to probability mass function, but it is defined for continuous random variables. Okay, thank you.